I got an email from Babylon this morning asking me at what price should I buy back into Apple, and that was prompted by the video that I put out last week indicating that uh, Apple's three consecutive quarters of down earnings could be an indication of the canary in the coal mine uh, otherwise, Wall Street. And uh, I, I wanted to address the, prob- the, the question, and the answer to the question is in this chart right here. This is a trading views chart of, of Apple, and it shows the 50-day, um, the 100-day, and the 200-day moving average. And from that chart, we can create some awareness of how Apple stock moves, and it's best if you have a chart on every stock that you have this question on so you can answer the question, is now the time to buy back in? Again, understand if you're going to be buying stocks, you buy on fundamentals. That is earnings, earnings, and earnings. If you're going to trade stocks, you you trade on technicals. This is something that uh, Mark teaches over on our Platinum uh, channel, which he teaches uh, swing trading. Now, I don't do swing trading. I do more long-term investing, but it gives me signals as to where is the buy-in and where should I buy in. And then if it's going down, where should I shave off in order to capture profits and avoid losses? So let's get a little deeper into that. And let's look at a couple of stocks and one in particular that it's down some 17% today, uh, where should I buy into it as well? Let's get into this right after I share with you. This isn't financial advice. It isn't meant to be. It's me sharing my knowledge with my tribe. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, here's my trading views chart on uh, Apple, as you see here. And if you want uh, to get trading views charts to help you make such decisions, uh, I'll put a link in the description that'll give you a, a discount, uh, and, and it's an affiliate link. What I've got here is a chart of Apple. And uh, as if you look at it, I've put in a 50-day, a 100-day, and a 200-day moving average. And you can see that um, Apple moves along these averages. And if you can find a signal to give you an idea as to what level of resistance are we dealing with, and what we're dealing with right now is a level of of a 100-day moving average. And you can see over the last three days, Apple has kind of bounced off of it. So I would say to Babylon, if I'm looking for a buy-in price, I'm saying it's right here. It's, It's at uh, $176.68. That's what I'd look for uh, it to buy in. And again, is that supported? Uh, here you can see again, it moves to its lines of resistance. And the lines of resistance here was the, um, again, the 100-day moving average. Once, If we follow our our plan, as we've said before, whenever it drops out of uh, or below the 200-day moving average, as it did um, right here, that's when we sell everything. We get out of it and say, no, we don't want to deal with this. Or again, um, here it moved under the 200-day. No, we don't want to move deal with all this. When we then buy back in total, this is where we buy back in. This is if we're a long-term investor. If you're now a new investor and you're saying, I want to buy into Apple, uh, this is your signal. This is your signal. Now, is that guaranteed? No, nothing's guaranteed. So let's, uh, let's take that logic and then apply it to some other stocks. This is another stock that I own that's getting hit pretty hard in the last couple of days. It's called Symbotic. It's in the, the field of building robots to run distribution centers. And as you can see, it's come under a, a tremendous amount of pressure. Again, if I look at its history, it moves along this 50-day moving average. It Here it has dropped under it, uh, but then came back very strong. So if I'm looking at this today, I'm saying I want to put in an order to buy 
into this stock at $44.45. Now, it may go under that, but history tells me it will rebound from it, and it will rebound substantially. So that's how I use those. Let's look at one more. Now, this is NVIDIA, probably a stock that you own, and probably you're seeing it come down as, as uh, in the last couple of days. But look at its history. It has moved along this 50-day moving average. Uh, does that mean it won't go below it? Does that mean it won't come down and fill this gap here that was created back in uh, May of uh, this year? No, it doesn't. But history gives us some guidance and technology gives us some guidance that this is probably its support level. And that's where uh, I might want to add to my position. This is Google. Uh, I think we can learn a lot from this chart right here. The first thing we learn is anytime it moves below the 200-day moving average, we bail. Okay, we get out because we don't want to deal with this. Uh, that's that's avoiding losses. I, I've done a very extensive video on the website digging deep into this on a number of stocks, showing you that red line is the 200-day moving average. We can go back uh, as far as you want. And when you cross it, you get out. And when you come back over it, you get back in and you ride this up. But again, when it crosses it, you get out, okay? On, on, on buying in, again, now we look at the 50-day uh, and the 100-day. As you can see, Google right now is in the mode of moving with the 50-day moving average. So if I said to my, if, if you came to me and said, okay, I want to get into Google. It's something I want to own. Where would I suggest you buy it? I'd suggest you buy it when it gets down to that yellow line. That yellow line is the 50-day moving average. It tells me it, here historically, or short history, it isn't going to get to the 100-day, and it's not going to get to the 200-day. So if I want to buy in, I'm going to wait for it to come to the 50-day, the and that's where I'll buy in, and then I'll become a long-term holder of Google. I am already a long-term holder of Google, but as I said, once it crosses this 200 day, that red line, I, I'm, I'm on the sideline. I'm waiting for it to come back and cross over it again, and then I'll take it up to here. Okay, that's how I use trading views. That's how I use the uh, 50, the 100, and the 200 day moving average. Babylon, I hope that helps you and anyone else who had this question. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I hope it gives you some insight as to how you can become a better investor and make better investment decisions. I don't do videos that are uh, highly produced and with a lot of graphics and whatever. And what I try to do is share my knowledge on a current basis to, to again, as I say, make you a better investor. And in that, in that vein, we have created a website, Best of Us Investors, that is, goes into great detail. It, it gives you videos like what I just did, uh, and it helps you uh, to understand the markets from different perspectives. One, my, my objective and my, my emphasis is on fundamentals. I will constantly say, if you want to buy a good company, you examine three numbers, their revenues, their revenues, and their revenues. If they have increasing revenues above 20% uh, on a quarterly basis, they're a growing company. And that those growing revenues will eventually find their way to the bottom line, and that will turn into profits, and that will grow the business. But the other dynamic that's involved here is the markets, and that's the momentum of the markets that when a stock is fallen out of favor, maybe it's just because people are taking profits or that they are uh, sh have shorted the stock and they're clearing their shorts. There's a lot of dimension there that has really nothing to do with the success of the company. Um, Apple, Google, Microsoft, um, Meta, NVIDIA, uh, super micro uh, computers are money-making machines. If they were private companies, they'd just be spitting out money. 
but they're public companies. And so the public markets come in and create a, a diversion. The, if, if you're a long-term investor, you say, okay, I can deal with that. I'll just sleep through it and it'll be okay. But because I understand what's happening. And right now, what I believe is happening is the internet is being rebuilt to accommodate the uh, surge of data processing that is going to have to happen to keep up with artificial intelligence and machine learning. So they're they're building out the, the internet data centers. And so these computer companies and the chip companies are having a heyday right now. Um, the, the markets will move them up and down, but in the long term, they're going to pay. Then you need to address uh, who's going to deliver AI to you. The, the, the inter- infrastructure is our bus 13. Thing. The, the uh, delivery of artificial intelligence is our bus 12. And we will eventually have a bus 14, which is going to be about the medical care revolution to medical cure. We'll deal with that in the future. AI will play a major role in that. If you like this kind of video and you want to be in a community that works this way to make better investment decisions, come to Best of Us Investors. There you will find a sign up for the different levels uh, that we make available, a $4 level for those people who just want to come to our Discord and chat and interchange ideas, a, uh, a premium plus that is for people who want access to my portfolio and the bus 13 and bus uh, 12 and the bus 14, and then some of our videos on how to avoid losses, kind of like what I was just talking to you about the moving day averages. Then if you want to get into the technicals, that's what Mark does on the platinum level and he teaches you swing trading and that kind of relates to what I just shared with you about the moving averages as to where you buy in and where you get out. So that's what the tribe is all about. That's what Kerry Grinkmeyer is all about. I'm a retired financial advisor, uh, CFP, CHFC, and CLU. I'd love to join you to uh, or invite you to join our community. And in order to do that, you go to the bu- the the um, website and you get on the bus. Thank you.